my computer. Hello and welcome to the Mana Legacy Podcast. This is episode number 12. I'm your host, Coach Dennis from manalegacy.org. And here we talk about men, women, families, sex, masculinity, and life in general. And today is the first time we're going with video instead of just audio. So please hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when future podcasts drop, as well as when other videos are released. And today, the thing that got us going on this is a man who sent an email saying, sex is off the table. I'm going crazy. What can I do? Help me. And Jeff Allen, my guest today, from Good Guys to Great Men, one of the fellow coaches whose company is Great Men Move Mountains, got this note. And Jeff, welcome and thanks for being here. Yeah, Dennis, love to be here. Thanks for having me, bud. Yeah, this this gentleman is kind of going st- crazy. He said he's got blue balls this week and sex has been decreasing more and more and more over the months. And he's, you know, kind of in panic mode, feeling like he's going to fall off the cliff here if his dick doesn't get touched here soon. Well, how long has it been though? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's been four months since he's had sex. Uh, prior to that, they had negotiated how often they were going to have sex, which you and I know goes really great when we try to negotiate with her about sex. That went, so you can, you can imagine how awesome that went. So that went from, hey, eight times a month to seven to six to five to her saying, you know what, let me just tell you when I'm ready for sex. And it's been four months. So there's no sex. Say it. She may not be ready very often. Um, <laughs> Oh, I almost hate to admit this. That kind of brings back a memory. I, in my last marriage, I got frustrated. I got a little annoyed. And I decided I'm not going to initiate anymore. Yeah, it didn't work out real well. <laughs> and yeah. it, the, it began this Saturday after Thanksgiving. And... How long did it go? March... <laughs> yeah before what happened that happened in march before the funny part is it came up in a couple's bible study we were doing and she said you know oh and you know i don't know how long it's been and i i went and i gave her the exact number <laughs> and Down that to the did not, but it actually spurred some change but it was kind of it wasn't funny but it's hilarious now and it was like yeah I do remember when because it was Thanksgiving weekend is the only reason I remembered. But yeah, I've never done that since. Never will. I don't tell it. And ironically, that's different than take sex off the table that we talk to guys about. Exactly. I wanted to say that uh, to never initiate sex yourself is very different than being sensual, doing foreplay, doing other things, verbal connection, emotional, spiritual connection. That's very different than I'm not going to try to put penis in vagina, obviously. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the staircase of intimacy of how to do that from kind of ground zero. Yes. And, you know, I've got to be honest, the, we've discussed this in the past, and that's what made me think about the staircase and got me going down this. You're the reason, Jeff, that I went down this rabbit hole and uh, building out the staircase. and. I actually have a different top step than a lot of guys, and we will talk about that when the time comes. But for years, like most men, I viewed the staircase as one goal, the top step, sex. Yeah. And, uh, you know, been working on my staircase, and then you released your audio book with Cynthia. Oh, my. You nailed it with the that audio book the guys should all listen to you two really crushed it and again nonverbal, verbal physical i want to sh- bring up your staircase right now can you see that yep yeah, looks good all right and why don't you talk about that a little bit because you hit on you're not staying on one step and then we talk about dancing up and down the staircase Yeah, that's a good question. So today I want to give an overview. I mean, certainly guys can go to my website, greatmenmovemountains.com slash free audiobook and punch in your info and you get free access to the 45 minute audiobook that my co-coach and fiance, Cynthia Cruz did. And this is one page of the free bonus PDF accompaniment 
that comes with the audiobook. So yeah, briefly, if we're trying to grow connection with our woman, if we want her to feel close to us, if we want her to feel passionate about us and the relationship and the life that we have together, we need to realize it's way more than just penis and vagina. And so the first three levels of what we call the staircase of intimacy have to do with nonverbal connection, verbal connection, and physical connection. And physical connection starts with small things like touching her hair or holding her fingertips or the back of her arm or touching her cheek or the small of her back, as it says here. And so the key thing, Dennis, is nonverbal is about how we hold positive regard in our mind for her. And that may be difficult right now with you know, the men that you and I work with one-on-one, -on -one, Dennis, are right now maybe being forced to quarantine together <laughs> uh, in the same place where they can't, they can't move out or separate from one another. And that's been a torturous situation. I definitely have clients like that right now. Or they are kind of in give up mode. So since sex is no longer on the table, they just sit down on the bottom step, as I call it, and pout like a little boy. And those are not the only options. The options are okay, let's realistically start back at step one and dance up and down here with some very basic, very simple, very effective ways of connecting with her so that she doesn't feel like we're trying to get sex all the time. Well, and, you know, it's interesting because um, I, in listening to the audio book, Cynthia, there was, a, there was a, something she said in there that just kind of washed over me. You cannot escalate physically beyond her perception where your relationship is on the emotional staircase. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's profound. And most guys, in, I think in the 20s, we'd be like, huh, what, whatever, you know. And it's about safety. It's about knowing that you can be vulnerable. Yeah, and I want to add, so in our 20s, <laughs> and I'd love to hear a story about you in your 20s, certainly, but in our 20s, I had no idea of these tools. You know, you and I talk about the three forms of confidence, behavioral confidence, emotional confidence, and spiritual confidence, and I had no idea what those three forms of confidence meant. I had no idea how to uh, escalate slowly and bring in foreplay all the time and not go for sex all the time. It's something that guys into their 40s, 50s, and 60s still have difficulty with. So I'd love to hear a story from you, Dennis. So in my 20s, some of the tools I used were, well, it's getting closer to closing time, readjust the target audience. That's how dense I was. Uh, but like now, because the Probably the most effective tool or the light bulb moment in my 20s, though, was Shelly in the Army. So out of my league, it wasn't funny. <laughs> uh, God, she was beautiful. And I was not in her league, and I asked her out to make her dinner. And as she was getting ready to destroy me with maybe an impolite no, she said, did you say make me dinner? I said, yes, I want to cook for you. She said, nobody's ever made me dinner. And she said, yes. And it did a lot for my perceived credibility that she went out with me. It was a one and done. Don't, don't <laughs> I like how that's where you went. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't tell us about the date. You just said, yeah, that raised my social status. because she. <laughs> well, there wasn't a lot <laughs> to tell about the date. Right? We had a nice evening, but there was no, you know, there was just nothing there. Now, fast forward to now something I would have never considered in my 20s is spending four hours with a woman not allowing anyone to take their pants off, just kissing. Mm. Oh, my God. Wait, did you say not allowing her to take her pants off? Yeah, I did. That was my rule I established. Mm. And I might have taken 20 minutes to take her tops off. Mm. And we kissed. Oh, it was amazing. And it was far in my 20s, I would have been frustrated. That's all that we did. Oh, my God, it was, it's going to rank up there in, in one of the more erotic and enjoyable evenings in my life. You know, and uh, 
that's not something I could have figured out or known in my 20s. And, uh, you know, back then in my 20s, I didn't really have the knowledge to visualize and look forward with Shelly. You know, I was just, oh, my God, ask her out, make her dinner. And then, you know. The, the yeah, it's like that's that's kind of the, just the fumbling along in life that all of us do, right? That is exact. You nailed it. I fumbled along, and uh, you know, I believe she was out of my league back then. And there's no such thing as that now for uh, the guys who do the work, and they know that because of the value they bring. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you circled it there. I'm glad you circled it there because what you had said about she was out of my league. You and I know that there is no such thing as leagues now it's all about our mindsets and how we approach this work you know i'm a men's coach but i've actually coached some women and had a lot of women ask me where are these guys you work with because they want to find them they oh. want high quality high value men that have done some work and it's just kind of interesting how it goes full circle and when we were fumbling along, we didn't visualize. We weren't looking forward. We, we didn't know about holding them in high regard. And, uh, you know, it, they've even done studies on this stuff. Yeah, that's why we teach these skills now. I've got, a, I've got a great video from a Harvard psychologist and professor, Dan Gilbert. It's about 40 seconds I'm going to share right now about our brain's immense power to visualize both the negative situation and the positive situation. This is gonna dovetail us here going forward. So let me share this right now. Okay. In the blink of evolutionary time. Well, turns out the prefrontal cortex does lots of things, but one of the most important things it does is it is an experience simulator. You know, flight uh, pilots practice in flight simulators so that they don't make real mistakes in planes. Human beings have this marvelous adaptation that they can actually have experiences in their heads before they try them out in real life. This is a trick that none of our ancestors could do, that no other animal can do quite like we can. It's a marvelous adaptation. It's up there with opposable thumbs and standing upright in language as one of the things that got our species out of the trees and into the shopping mall. Now, <laughs> out of the trees and into the shopping mall, right? So we can utilize, Dan's point is that we can utilize this tool or we can just ignore this tool. And I know now as the man that I am now, the more wise man than, than I was in my 20s and more wise than I was, shit, 2015, Dennis, was my worst relationship year of my whole life. That's when I got separated and divorced. That's when um, my wife at that time, my ex now, you know, cheated. And I was in fucking free fall. And that's when I found this work. And I was done stumbling. I was done stumbling and falling from the trees. I wanted to actually know how to move forward, what to do, how to be that man. And that's what you and I teach every single day. It's really exciting. And it is more satisfying than probably any other work there is to help another man. Uh, Absolutely. And you know, I love that video because we've talked about it. Which voice do you feed, the positive or negative? It's which one you give the attention to. That's right. And the guys, when we first meet them and start working with them, they don't have a positive voice often. That's exactly right. That's exactly so, right. They're trying. That's funny that you say that because they're trying to go to their their soon to be ex or their spouse or their estranged spouse or you know wherever you are with your spouse right now. They're trying to get her to tell us we're okay. They're trying to get her to validate us and be that positive voice when really that's completely our responsibility. And we have, we have that ability and she doesn't want to be our mommy either. It's definitely yeah. not sexy. It isn't. So, you know, it's funny. So I built out my staircase last month. Nice. And it was an absolute blast. And now, and again, I'm not a carpenter, so don't, don't give me too much crap for this. Can you see that? <laughs> nice. I love so, it. Fuck yeah. Um, and the high regard, I look at that as the foundation for everything. And, you know, you talked about the different steps, and I kind of break them out. And you notice foreplay is a long way away from sex. Yeah, foreplay in the red there in the middle, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's something that should be going on all the time, really. Not 
because you want sex, just because you're that loving kind of guy who is playful with the woman he loves. Now, this is this staircase is what I see, um, and it wouldn't have looked like this in my 20s, but this staircase is in a healthier relationship and having fun and vulnerable conversations and sex. I wrestled with which one to put first mm -hmm. because um, they're, to, they're kind of, well, they always are going to be adjacent in my world. And I just, you know, we talk about, we teach the guys about drive-bys, no lingering, about avoiding and eliminating the needy behavior and eye contact and not forgetting to smile. You know, it's, it's one of those things I think we just get stuck, like you said, sitting on that step pouting if we're not getting what we want instead of playing around, dancing up. And you know what? Sometimes she's not going to like the touch, the light touch. And sometimes you're just going to smile and go, can't help myself. You're beautiful. And then out the door you go. And so it's one of those things that uh, I think you get to move up the stairs more when there's a feeling of safety, security, and connectedness. Uh, and I, I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Jeff? Yeah. And so what does safety mean? Safety means number one. Well, so I have, I have a client right now, Jason, who is dancing up and down the first three steps and sex is off the table. They have two teenage boys. Um, she's basically said, I, I don't feel like I'm interested in sex right now. It feels like you want more quote intimacy than I do. And she's concerned that intimacy for him just means penis and vagina, right? And so he just had this conversation with her the other day. I, I want to fast forward. He and I have been working together about four months. So he's in the now asking for what he wants in a calm, confident, connected, passionate way. Okay. So he's done the dancing. He's done the verbal, the nonverbal, the small amounts of physical, the drive-bys, meaning it's just this uh, connected moment. And then he leaves for work and he's, he's whispered sensual words in her, her ear which you can get a list of sensual words off of our ebook also. That's the accompaniment yep. I talked about. And he's been trying these things and he just had this conversation, which was calibrated and he practiced letting her know, I would love for you to allow me to be attracted to you. And I would love for us to have a passionate connected relationship. Part of me is a little concerned that we may not have that. And that's something that I think is important for us. And I would love to have, so I would like us to have small bits of intimacy together. And Dennis, what she did was basically start to shut down and turn away from him. And he asked her, what else would you like me to know about that? Or is there something more you'd like me to know right now? And she said, I'm just sad because you're not happy. And he said, I'm not happy. And you know, that's how he, he mirrored back to her. I'm, I'm not happy. And she said, well, you're obviously not happy and then therefore I'm not happy. And so her mo her whole world in that moment was just my man is unhappy. And her, one of her fears is thinking that that means if I don't give him sex, then he's not going to be happy. So she doesn't feel safe in that giant disconnect. She doesn't feel safe in knowing, well, what does that mean for him? What does that mean for us? And that's, so that's his next steps here. That's, I just emailed him back, Jason back and said he did great staying in his lane and being centered. And the goal now is for him to continue to be this dancing on the first and second stairs, still smiling at her, holding her in high regard, not trying to escalate, you know, give her two or three days to just realize he's not gonna try some crazy thing. She needs to still feel safe to your point and then try something very small to dance up the stairs. And what I recommended was, and she's, she snuggles him in bed, they spoon in bed, but that's about as far as they go physically, right? So I said, well, one thing you can do is enter bed on her side of the bed, give it two or three days, enter bed on her side of the bed and just say, I'd just love to sit with you for a minute and then I'll go. And so he framed what he's going to do. I'm gonna sit with you for a minute, touch her hair, look at her eyes. That's, those are all on your staircase too, Dennis. Mm -hmm. I say, I'm gonna sit with you for a minute and then I'll go lets her feel safe in what to expect here, okay? So he's leading emotionally in the relationship, right? He's setting the tone, as Dr. Robert Glover would say. He's taking the lead and setting the tone in a way that she feels safe and knows what to expect completely. 
Nice. And, you know, it's funny. She assumes he's unhappy when I know when a man's at that stage, when I'm working with them, they are happy because they see the woman that they love and they see forward looking the, the optimistic positive what the outcome can be and they know they're going to be okay either way exactly. and for us for men a lot of us you know doesn't matter how much work you've done sometimes we trip and fall down the stairs and it isn't pretty yeah. we argue we throw tantrums we act like a little boy sometimes we only look at that top step and that's when you really do stumble uh, what can we do when that happens yeah, that's, that's a great question. I want to share, uh, first of all, I have a tool exactly of what to do after we've tripped down the stairs or smashed our face trying to jump too many steps at one time and how to reconnect, how to vulnerably connect and still be confident and attractive at the same time. So how do I be confident, vulnerable and attractive at the same time? And I call that the don't be a tool tool. <laughs> and I'll, I'll I love share that. The name. Yeah. I love the name. Thanks, Dennis. I'll share that in a little bit. First, I want to share a clip that you and I talked about uh, from Jocko's podcast. I love about, Jocko. Yeah, Jocko's awesome. About insecurity. And so this is about three and a half minutes long. He's got his take on insecurity, how he attacks it, and what that means to him. And then a little story about he, how he was challenged in the face of a woman, a confidence test or a shit test or a congruence test, what you might want to call it. So I'm going to share that right now. I've listened to all of the podcasts before asking this question. Can you please explain how do you deal or have dealt with your insecurities? Thank you very much for your help. I guess broadly, fundamentally, what I'm going to do with my insecurities I'm, is I'm going to confront them. I'm going to put them out there. I'm going to own them. I'm going to own them. I'm going to own my insecurities. Uh, if I had to think of examples of situations where insecurities came into play for me one I was going through buds basic seal training and there was an event called pool competency where you are wearing your underwater breathing apparatus your scuba gear and they do all these horrible things to you and it's a very hard evolution and I failed it and I was confident going into it because I'd kind of done well. Most of the water things, underwater, not tying, life savings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I had done well. I was comfortable in the water. Mm -hmm. And so I was, a, I, when I failed this thing, which was, which was, I was freaked out, you know? And because people would fail pool comp and get kicked out of buds, you know? It's a nightmare for me. So I fail. And by the way, if you fail, so you, you take it on Friday, and then if you fail, you take it again on Monday. And if you fail again, you're rolled back. And then once you're rolled back, now you fail something else and you're gone. So it's a nightmare for me. I mean, I'm, I'm completely, I've gone from confidence to insecurity mm. about this thing. So what did I do? I, me and a couple of the other guys, we, I don't know why the instructors let us do this, they could probably get in trouble for it, but they, they let us take the scuba gear and use it in the dip tank, which is just a, a big bucket full of, I mean, a big uh, container full of water, probably four feet deep, and it's probably eight feet long by four feet wide. So it's just a small, where it's where you where you take fresh water and you put things to clean it. You, yeah. you put in fresh, we call it a dip tank. Mm -hmm. So they, they let us fill the dip tank up with water, totally unsupervised. And we went in there and we pool comped each other. Hmm. So we ripped each other's masks off, beat each other to hell, and just trashed ourselves. And by the time I went on Monday, I was, that insecurity that I had was now gone because we had been so freaking harsh to each other that by the time I was rolling in there, I was like, yeah, this isn't even insecurity. I'm like, bring it. Hmm. Go bring what you got. I'm ready. So that's a, that's one way to overcome or that, that I look at as something I was insecure, nervous about, right? How am I going to overcome it? I'm going to attack it. I'm going to, I'm going to go straight into that thing, into that insecurity. Uh, an another thing I was thinking about was kind of funny was I was like at a bar 
you know, back in, the, back in the day when I was young and single and whatever, hanging out, you know, having some beverages. Sure. And I'm ch ch chatting with some girl that I met. And, you know, as we're talking, we're you know, just kind of just talking, having a good time, whatever. And she's like, oh, you know, what do you do? You know, what do you, uh, well, she, oh, I'm a dental hygienist. She's a dental hygienist. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then she says, like, Something like, you know, um, we, we could take care of that gap in your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> she says that to me. And like without missing a beat, I'm like, oh, are you serious? I didn't know that you could expand gaps. How much bigger could you make it? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like she was, she was like totally, I don't know if the word stoked, but she realized that this whatever yeah. you know this gap between my teeth which some people might have as a big insecurity <laughs> like oh you know cover your mouth yeah. um it was like it's, it's fine like there it is yeah. i'm making fun of it basically yeah, yeah make so that's i think that is the the bottom line when you have some kind of in something that you're insecure about it, well if it's something that you can take control over cool then attack it and get good at it, you know. If you're if you're insecure about talking in front of people, cool. Attack that problem and get better at it. If you're insecure about you know confrontations with people, start training jujitsu. If you're insecure, uh, whatever, whatever you're insecure about, do it more. If you're insecure, if you think oh, every time I write an email, I feel like I'm you know it's, it looks like junk. Cool. Write more. Get better at writing it. So there's insecurities that you have like that that you can attack. Mm -hmm. If there's something that you can't change or that you can't control, then just get it out there. And yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't stop myself. I had to watch another minute, but I love Jocko. Jocko. So cool. He's a blast. Yeah, the uh, you either address it and tackle it, or I believe you use the phrase, "you you slay the dragon when it's small," or you got to deal with it when it's big. Yeah, exactly. Right. Whatever you ignore or whatever you shut shove away and suppress goes down into the basement to lift weights and that shit comes back stronger and more angry, you know, in the future every single time. So you got to face the dragon and look and see, it's really not as big as our imagination blows it up to be. That's the whole point of Dan Gilbert's talk there is how do we focus on it? How do we want to have a mindset around this? We have the power to choose that. Killing baby dragons is far easier. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your tool? Let's see your, tool not to be a tool for the guys. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll walk through this. Here we go. I'll walk through this quickly. And again, this is in the uh, free PDF accompaniment with the audiobook. And we talk about this and you can use this. You're going to practice it many times. But basically, you want to warm up with some kind of preface. You got an example there. And then you want to call out the elephant in the room. And so with Jocko, uh, the woman called out the elephant. But what we want to do is lead in the staircase or if sex is not on the table right now and she's feeling less connected and these kind of things she feels that she already knows that so the elephant in the room may be say i'd like to talk about something that's really important to me i was thinking about uh you know the connection between the two of us and i'll bet you think a part of me is frustrated so the elephant i'll bet you think a part of me is frustrated and you're right and you're right a part of me is frustrated you know, but also a part of me is a little scared because, and then positive vision, because what I would like for us to have is a connected relationship with our family growing together and us growing as a couple together and experiencing things in the world. And that doesn't mean that we have to have sex right now. It's not what I'm saying, but what I would love is for us to have little bits of intimacy together, holding your hand, us going on walks together, things like this. So then number five, you pick one of these questions. So how can we move forward from here? And then you shut love up. I now shut up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's an example of how to reconnect, how to repair when there's something obvious, there's an elephant in the room, there's a rift between the two of you, is the, the basic tenets are sort of don't shock her with what you're doing. Share with her, hey, I'd like to share with something that's important to me call out the elephant that she already knows is there, okay? Meaning mm -hmm. you can say that you're frustrated. She already knows that. 
she already <laughs> she's already felt that for months she feels that as soon as you walk in the door like she is way more emotionally intelligent generally the woman can pick up on those things generally faster than a man that's not always the case then us but and then to be vulnerable maybe about what you're embarrassed about okay and then you just roll right into what you want as a positive vision and obviously you have to be appropriate with the staircase where you are okay it's not like okay now i want backflip flying blowjobs off the chandelier i mean that's not <laughs> that's dangerous not going to be a, <laughs> yeah that's dangerous too yeah, you, she might bite down you don't want that yeah and i kind of think it's one of the things people don't always realize i think the stairs move they they change position and you know that's why when you're patient and calm you're you're not focusing on one step you know what i find amazing so I do the coffee and conversation calls on Saturday and the Zoom calls. And we had the men on there. We had double digit men. And I asked, what's more intimate, conversations or sex? And if this would have been a group of 20 year old guys, we know what the answer would be. Well, sex, you know, it'd be which kind of sex is more intimate, you know? And <laughs> yeah. The, the best answer, and, and I got to, it was one of the guys working with you was five years ago i would have said sex but now i realize it's conversation and again it's it's the step of vulnerable conversations of that being open i mean i love the men in our community we do truly have the top five percent that are working on themselves and not knuckle draggers you know and you know when i built my staircase i, I really wrestled with the vulnerable conversation sex i, I kept going which one goes on, you know, before the other? And they really kind of are intertwined and flip-flop, but they're always, always going to be adjacent. And that kind of goes to the discussion, and I've had this uh, intimacy versus sex. We look at men sometimes when we're younger, we look at them as exclusive. I have a friend, Miss Rebecca. And we have a very close relationship and in the, it made my last girlfriend a little uncomfortable. <laughs> and I had this moment of clarity last month when I was working on the staircase because Rebecca and I do not have a sexual relationship, but we have a deeply intimate relationship and that can make and cause concern, jealousy or insecurity for a lot of people. And then I have, I'm going to share the final staircase that I have, um, my finished version, because I have that different landing, that POB. Oops, hang on. I guess I have to learn how to hit the share button. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'd be able to do that pretty easily. All right, let me know when that comes up. There you go. I can see it. POB, post-orgasmic bliss. <laughs> yeah. And it's as for me i i almost value it as much as the sexual portion it is where i i feel almost more connected that having somebody snuggled in your arms and just kind of coming down from the physical act into the emotional and i i just think it is for me a piece that it, didn't exist in my life for the first 35 to 38 years. And I don't look back on sadness. I look, well, now I understand. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, when I look at the staircase of intimacy now, that having fun and the foreplay and the touch, it isn't about having sex. It is truly about just being with the person that you value and that is important to you and being that calm, confident, secure man and giving her the space to get comfortable and be intimate with you. Well, the most, yeah, the most intimate organ is between our ears right here. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And without that connectedness and without the feeling of safety, you can't grow intimacy. And I, Took me into my late 30s, early 40s to figure that out, you know. So I want to thank you for joining me today. It's been a blast. It's an important topic for the men. 
I love the free audio book on the staircase of intimacy that you and Cynthia did. Um, anybody listening to this, greatmenmovemountains.com. You can get that audio book, listen to it. It also has the workbook, which again, don't be a tool tool is <laughs> in and of itself invaluable, uh, worth it for the guys. Do you have anything to add, Jeff, before we wrap it up? Yeah, Dennis, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. I feel like we gave guys a perspective and a plan, right? They want, they want the facts and they want the tools. And I believe that we did that today. That's awesome. So you need to definitely tell them about your free giveaway that you launched. Was it yesterday, right? Yes. So tell them about that. And then I'll, I want to share a little bit about our retreat because we've already got guys signing up for our March retreat. And then we've got the fishing retreat in October that we're researching. So a a man's guide to divorce and, and it's about some of the practical stuff we we talk about a lot of things in, in growing and all but it's about the importance of understanding some of your legal rights what's going on how things can impact you uh, i even go into uh, inheritances people don't think about it. that's not a marital asset unless you dump it into the joint bank account so there's a lot of little things like that when it comes to custody and finances. And it's, it's one of those practical guides. It isn't the sexiest product in the world, but it's a really <laughs> important product. Well, and, to your, I was going to say, to your point, the reason that you did it, it's not just to try to plan on what to do and how to get the most out of divorce and that. It's not that at all. It's for the man to feel like he understands his rights and where he's coming from. And so he can feel more grounded and less just fearful of a gigantic hidden dragon, right? The getting rid of the fear of divorce frees a man on this journey to work on himself and maybe create version 2.0 with his wife, a loving, connected relationship that they both want and love. And it, it that fear is a hurdle until they overcome it. It, it slows down the progress. Uh, you and I have seen it time and time again. Once they're no longer afraid of divorce, their evolution their growth is just so fun to watch and absolutely in the way and yeah the retreat the confident man retreat first weekend in march in phoenix every year we got a couple guys already signed up it is a smaller intimate type of retreat because we have really deep conversations with these men we do a lot of work and then we have some fun at the gun range uh, we learn basic and advanced marksmanship skills, put a lot of rounds down range, and everyone got to two seconds with two shots on target. You, of course, had to put three shots on target in two seconds. Deadly accurate, too. And we are working on for the guys, this is a weird year with the coronavirus and all, and people are being sheltered in place. We are looking at having a retreat in October with some deep sea fishing, down in Florida, it is going to be a blast. The moment we can finalize the charter and the location, we will be rolling that out. And uh, we're, I know you and I are both looking forward to that. And guys, don't worry, just in case, we're gonna bring a little drama mean for you, just <laughs> in case, uh, but uh, we don't anticipate that's gonna be needed. Yeah, yeah, the retreats are to, utilize what we do out doing fun and make those a metaphor for how we bring that back into the world. Like, again, you need to be safe with your pistol. You need to be safe with your woman. You need to be in emotional control with your pistol. You need to be in emotional control with your woman and on and on. So we integrate those things in the retreats and it's so fun. So amazing. We cook amazing food. Dennis and I do, we both, you know, love cooking and we've been chefs in the past. And so we bring all these skill forward to, skills forward to have fun. And Dennis, I want to make sure you're such an, an honorable giving man that you say manoflegacy.org and you go down to the bottom, right? To fill in, subscribe, right. to get your free, your free guide, right? Yes, that's right. And uh, I'm a dot org because manoflegacy.com wasn't available when I formed the <laughs> business. And I was like, I, that name came to me because yeah. the legacy we create, it isn't about stuff. It's about the life you lived and what you create for your children. Absolutely. That's the legacy that matters. So. That's right. All right. That's right. Thank Love you for being Thank my so first much. video guest, Jeff. You have a great weekend and I will see you this coming week. Fantastic. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Bye.